How did that get in my lunchbox? The Story of Food by Christine Butterworth. One of the best parts of the day is when you lift the lid of your lunchbox to see what's inside. Your parents have packed it with lots of tasty things to eat. They probably got all the food from a grocery store. But food doesn't grow in a grocery store. So where did it come from before it was in the store? Just how did all this food get in your lunchbox? How did the bread in your sandwich get in your lunchbox? A farmer planted seeds in spring and by summer they'd grow into tall waving wheat with fat ripe grains at the tip of every stalk. The farmer cut the wheat with a giant combined harvester and sent it to a flour mill. The miller ground the grains into flour and trucks took the flour to the bakery. The baker mixed the flour with water, sugar and yeast, kneaded it into a soft squishy dough and baked it in a very hot oven. Out comes fresh loaves of bread, ready to send to the store. Take a bite of the bread in your sandwich. Mmm, crusty on the outside and soft in the middle. How did the cheese in your sandwich get in your lunchbox? Your cheese was once milk that came from a cow. A farmer milked the cows and a tanker from the dairy came to collect the milk. Step one is where the dairy makers warm up the milk. Step two is where they add a special bacteria that turns it sour and thick. Step three, they add a substance that animals use to digest milk called rennet. Step four is when it changes again and it turns into bits called curds and they're floating in a thing called whey. Step five, they drained off the whey, chopped up the rubbery curds and added some salt and pressed them into blocks. Step six, they stored the blocks for months until the cheese was ripe. Bite into your cheese. It's creamy and smooth, but tasty too, and tingly on the tongue. How did your tomatoes get in your lunchbox? Last summer, your tomatoes were growing in a big plastic tunnel full of tomato plants. The sun and the warmth made the plants grow tall and bloom with yellow flowers. As each flower died, a tiny green tomato fruit began to grow from its middle. Day by day, Plants sucked up water and the tomatoes swelled from green to orange to red. When bunches of ripe scarlet tomatoes dangled from the branches, the grower picked them. Then they sorted them, packed them and sent them to the store. Pop one in your mouth and squish the sweet sour juice out. How did your apple juice get in your lunchbox? Last spring, the apple trees in the orchard were full of flowers. In summer, tiny apple buds grew from each flower stalk. The buds kept growing and by autumn, the trees were full of ripe, sweet fruit. Pickers climbed into the trees and filled their bins with fruit. A truck took the bins to the juice factory, where sorters threw out any rotten apples. Then a machine washed the rest and mashed them in a milling machine. Seeds, skin and all. A huge press squeezed the mash till all its juice ran out. A heater warmed up the juice to kill off any germs and poured it into cartons. Mmm, suck hard on your straw and taste the apple tang. How did your carrots get in your lunchbox? Last spring, carrots were growing in a field on a vegetable farm. You wouldn't have seen any carrots then just long rows of feathery leaves. As the leaves grew taller in the summer sun, each carrot root pushed deeper into the earth, soaking up water and turning orange. By late summer, they had swelled so much that the top of each carrot poked out of the earth. Pickers pulled them up. Then the carrots were washed and packed into trucks. Bite into your carrot. See just how sweet and crunchy it tastes. How did the chocolate chip in your cookie get into your lunchbox? Cookies are made from flour, sugar and butter. And this one's got chocolate chips in it. Chocolate starts off as a bean. Well, lots of beans, which grow in pods on a cocoa tree. The pods are picked from the tree, then they're cut open and the beans are scooped out. 
These beans are spread out and left to dry in the sun. The dried beans are taken to a factory, sometimes on the other side of the world. In the factory, they're cleaned, roasted and ground into a thick, sticky paste. Sugar's mixed in so the paste gets sweeter, but it's still gritty, so it's squeezed, stirred, melted and cooled to make it really smooth. It takes a lot of work to make chocolate. Finally, the chocolate is molded into blocks. These are made into little chips that will melt in your mouth all over again. How did your clementine get in your lunchbox? Early in summer, the trees in the clementine grove were full of sweet smelling waxy flowers. As the flowers died, a tiny green clementine berry began to grow out of each one. The clementines swelled in the warm sun, turning from green to yellow. By the time cooler winter weather arrived, the clementines had turned orange and were so heavy and full of juice that they made the branches droop. Pickers climbed ladders to reach them. They had to wear gloves so they didn't bruise the tender fruit inside the skin. They washed them and packed them and the grower sent the boxes in trucks to the market. It's easy to peel a clementine, then all you have to do is pop the juicy pieces in your mouth and bite. Most clementines are seedless. You've eaten it all, from the first bite of bread to the last piece of fruit. It came from fields and farms, from orchards, from groves and from dairies. So many people help bring it to you, farmers and bakers, cheese and chocolate makers, pickers, packers and truck drivers. And now it's all in your stomach, starting to do the job that food does, helping you grow taller and stronger and giving you get up and go. You need more than lunch to make you grow and keep you healthy. Every day you need to choose food from each of the sections on this plate. Most of your food should come from the fruits and vegetables and carbohydrates sections. Carbohydrates are the types of food that fill you up fast and give you energy to keep you going. And we all know what fruits and vegetables do. Our body needs lots of these to keep you healthy. Then on the other side of the plate we have foods that are just as important as carbohydrates and fruits and vegetables but your body doesn't need as much of them, like protein. They're to help you grow these extra inches, bodybuilders. Then you've got the dairy builders, which are the bone builders, and they help your teeth grow strong too. And then there's the stuff you eat for a treat. Just a little bit of these ones. Food facts. Your body is made mostly of water, so you need at least six drinks a day to keep yourself topped up. Most of these drinks should be water, not fizzy drink, which has lots of sugar in it. Your body is growing all the time, even when you are asleep. So remember, don't skip breakfast. It gets your body through the day. Too much sitting around won't keep your body healthy. It doesn't matter whether you chase a ball, your dog, or your friends, but spend about an hour a day on the move. It's good to eat five different kinds of fruits and vegetables every day. Hey, why not try a new one this week?